Welcome everyone to Sporadics by Sideline Sports Network. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, evening, whatever it is. This is a pre-recording, uh, so we're doing it during the morning. Most of you will not get this release until Thursday at 7.30. Um, all uh, Sporadic members will have this uh, today by 1 o'clock on YouTube. So we hope that you enjoy uh, the show today. As always, this show is brought to you by Game Day Vodka. Game Day Vodka is an American distilled, an American sold uh, vodka, and you can order it off of gamedayvodka.com as long as you are 21 years of age or older. Or if you have a Publix Wine and Spirits near you, you can find it. They are the official vodka of Florida State University and of multiple other universities, so they claim. So, James and I have been talking about this interview for quite a while now. Um, obviously I'm extremely excited for it because y'all have heard my praises for, uh, Mr. Alford, the athletic director here at Florida state. He's in my opinion, one of the quickest, most accomplished athletic directors. I think Florida state's ever had, uh, but previous to that, he was an extremely accomplished at everywhere at each and every endeavor that he was at. So those are the type of questions or comments that are going to be made. Uh, and I hope y'all enjoy. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to bring on Mr. Alford. Morning, Alford. Hey, Chris. Hi, big game. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, sir. How are you? Excellent. Beautiful day in Tallahassee, as always. Yes, sir. Yeah, you seem to be extremely busy. <laughs> We are, uh, I know this is pre-recorded, jumping on a plane here in about two hours to head to uh, Iowa, the great state of Iowa. We've got some good knolls in Iowa, too, uh, that I'm looking forward to getting together with to, to watch our girls take on Georgia Friday at noon. Uh, so looking forward to that. Brooke's done an unbelievable job this year and couldn't be more proud of the culture she's immediately developed. Um so looking forward to them going and having a good showing in the NCAA tournament. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I was going to bring up a little bit about where you started out at as far as college goes, if, if I've got this correct. You started at Mississippi State, then went to UAB? Yes, sir. And then you actually went back and got something at Arkansas? My master's degree. All right. Worked in the athletic, G8 in the athletic department for actually one of my mentors is um, who I G8'd with, and I've known forever and still call and seek advice is Terry Don Phillips, uh, who was that with me at Arkansas uh, then, and then went to Oklahoma State and of course was at Clemson uh, his last stop before he retired. But uh, yeah, I was with him at the University of Arkansas, kind of his chief of staff as a GA, um, I went to school and then sit with him all day and, and, and learn. Where, where do you feel like you got your niche for marketing the most? Do you think that helped you the most at Michigan when you were there? Or do you think that helped you most at Dallas or Alabama? Uh, that's a great question, Chris. You know, I've always been on the external side of things. I'm, I'm always um, going to look at how we drive revenue, how we grow our brands. What can we do different to be cutting edge and ask our staff too to push the needle a little bit to bring concepts. But I've been, I was very fortunate and I was blessed to have worked for some icons in this industry, whether it's Terry Don Phillips, who is a dear, dear friend, uh, the late Mal Moore at Alabama, uh, Joe Castiglione, the current AD at Oklahoma, working for Mr. Jones, and the Jones family at the Cowboys and, and seeing how that process or really how their organizational structure and being on the executive team and get to know how, how decisions were made. Um, ben Sutton, IMG, uh, dear friend, but just having to be able to be around work for uh, some of our icons in our industry and being a sponge and just asking questions can still call these people and ask them questions and at any moment. And you're always going to do things your own way. Um, but looking at success that they've had, 
uh, in their careers and then taking from them what I felt worked with my personality and my core values and, and installing those beliefs, efforts, thoughts, concepts, values, whatever you want to say into my process and procedures uh, that I think moves an organization forward. And one thing I learned from Mr. Jones, I say it all the time, and I use this analogy, was just really learning speed of process. Um, make a decision. If you have a concept, an idea, float it out. I call it throwing spaghetti on the wall and you see one sticks and you have a thought, we'll put resources behind it. Don't form a committee to talk about it for two months. And just you got to make a decision and move. And I really bring that to our athletic department here is, hey, bring the let's make educated decisions, analytical decisions, but make decisions and, and move forward. And once you make it, don't look back. We're going to put resources behind it uh, to be successful. So it's constantly just using advisors that I've been fortunate to be around my whole life to help guide me in, in my processes. You talked about resources and uh, putting resources. And one of the things that the fan base kind of had made up in their mind over the last couple of years is that Florida State lacked in resources. What is your opinion about what the how we have those, where our resources like now? And kind of can you give us a little bit of a forecast of what you believe um, is necessary in order for us to be able to continue to be able to, as you say, put resources behind the things that, behind the educated ideas? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question, and, and it is uh, something people, when I first got here, big game, people were like, oh, you know, we don't have the alumni base. And I do the analytics because everything I do is very analytical. I got President McCullough laughs at how my data <laughs> I bring him and, and show him and talk about. But, uh, you know, we got the largest alumni base in the ACC by more than 50,000 than, than any other school in our conference. And number two is North Carolina. So when you look at that, but yet we're like seven on our booster numbers and donor lists within the conference on number of donors. Um, now we raise great money uh, with what we have, but we could be doing a better job of getting people to support the program at any level through the annual fund, 70 bucks a year, $50 a year. It doesn't matter because um, it truly makes a difference. But if you go back and look at our numbers, we when I first got here, was able to go out and negotiate a New Deal uh, concessions agreement because ours wasn't profitable for having experience and negotiated those every place I've been and been able to look at the analytics and break down the stands and points of sale. We were only having 200, just barely over 200 points of sale. The stadium this size needs 600. We've gotten it to a little bit over four now because it's a 71 year old stadium and we're having to pull power from all over places to get points of sale up um, with that. So that agreement is now a lot more profitable than what it was looking at our fanatics agreement and doing a new agreement there. Um, Nike's a long term. We have a great partner in Nike with that agreement, but just looking at what I call our external partners uh, and how can we better benefit our, mar our trademarks and licensing. What are we doing there? I got a great person in, in Katie Pugh who runs that department and we've grown that over the last two years. So if you take a snapshot of what I call our external revenue, things we control, take away the conference distribution. So if we don't count conference distribution, we are the seventh most profitable athletic department in the country last year. Uh, that's we're behind teams like Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, Penn State, and then uh, Ohio State, Michigan, and then us. <laughs> we're number seven on that list. Um, so we've risen, we've risen over the last two years by going out and looking at our brand, talking to our partners, and, and I wouldn't say leveraging, but negotiating a more favorable relationship. Uh, financially for Florida State. And we're going to continue that trend and continue doing that as we look at how we conduct our business. And and big game, a lot of that comes back, uh, and I tip my hat to two NFL franchises working in Major League Baseball, of having that experience 
of going out and having those that negotiation or that revenue stream experience of looking at different ways to do things. That was actually going to be my first question. And then you started talking about the other things. But how do you with one thing I've noticed is that when I noticed this in high school, high school is becoming more with co- every four or five years. What was Norman College becomes Norman High School and what feels like was Norman Pros becomes Norm in college. How do you shift? How do you help Florida State kind of prepare itself as the landscape continues to seem to shift into more of a pro focus, not just with NILs, but I mean facilities, the game day experience, where you look at what's going on with different sports. Like, how do you prepare that and how do you get people not to? Because one thing I'm seeing is um, older alumni get a little bit afraid um, when they see these guys are too much like pros. But how do you um, prepare a college for something like that? Well, well, the, the collegiate game's changing. Um, it's different from when you played. Um, when I played, you know, we got a cot in three squares, and we were happy. <laughs> we thought we we were good. Um, you know, that's it's just different now, and rightfully so. I'm 100 percent for the NIL. Um, I chaired it, as you know, for three years. The AD Association and, and worked with the NCAA. I'm still working with people in DC on a federal bill and have connect contacts there and, and probably spend a couple hours a day of my time on, on that nationally. I'll be in Dallas and April talking about it. Um, so uh, I am 100% for that believe in it. It's the right thing to do uh, to make sure. I mean, I look at what we're doing nutritionally now for our student athletes, um, not to mention name, but I had a, a student athlete transfer in um who had a shake a nutrition shake and i looked at her and i was like that's great and she transferred in here from a very prominent power five school and i said that's great and then he, what's your favorite shake and da-da-da. she goes mr alford you don't understand this is great and i didn't we didn't get these nutritional shakes after our workouts i was like well, at my previous place and i was like what are you talking about explain and she goes, the football got them. Um, but we were not allowed to go near the nutrition station in the weight room after a workout. She goes, only football. We're here. That was a big push of mine. Our nutrition, she goes, my food that I get here and what y'all provide in the nutrition stations on campus, what you provide us in our locker room. I can go get a smoothie that's that a dietitian is making for me with what I need to recover or what I need to weight gain or in your, my case, big game, James, what we need to weight loss (laughs) and, and help us out. But everything is done and we've, we've upped our um, resources and nutrition and dietitian because that is a new part of the game. And what we're feeding them at our training table was one of the first things I did was totally revamp and bring in legends to do our training table, my relationship with the Jones family and the Steinbrenner family who owns legends. So they do the training table for the New York Yankees, the Dallas Cowboys, the Bucks, Real Madrid, um, Manchester U, and the Florida State Seminoles. (laughs) So, I mean, that's it. We're getting the very best because our student athletes deserve that uh, scientific approach if for us. So it's coming in and to answer your question long, but it's coming in and changing the culture, looking at our facilities. How do we make a difference? Um, and really it was getting them updated, but holding our staff and changing a culture and looking at our facilities to say there, Florida state is a brand, Florida state, there is a standard to how we operate and it's going to be in a first class manner. So walking by something and seeing trash, walking by, a towel in the roof that's got a stain on it, walking down a hallway of carpet in the Moore Center that has not been replaced in 15 years is not okay. And we're gonna fix it, we're gonna fix it now. We spent $8 million in the last six months just on cosmetic things that a lot of people won't notice. Some of it, the biggest chunk was that softball with a fan experience and having that great premium seating at softball, some baseball, but a lot of it, is changing carpet in the academic center that was disgusting and hadn't been changed in 15 years and making sure that we're providing the very best experience for our student athletes 
while they're here that we could possibly provide. But that takes donor support. It takes everyone helping, but it's making attention to the little things that I think make a difference. But it's a culture change. It's a mindset change of people or staff. And I brought in new staff with me and staff that was already here just saying, this is how, this is the new standard of how we're going to operate. That was a long answer for you, wasn't it, sir? I, I think it was great. Um, <laughs> Work for me. It kind of moving back to a little bit of what you were talking about previous in the previous question that James had. When you were at Central Michigan as athletic director, you kind of gave that place a complete uplift due to the eight coaches you hired in different departments. And then you gained the revenue over a very short period of time up 600% according to sports analysts that put mm -hmm. out. Have you done any of those similar things, which I know you have, but in detail, I guess, those similar things that you've done at Florida State that kind of – I mean, you raised that – Seven, I think it was 78 spots in a year as far as revenue gain. Um, what are you doing at Florida State that currently does those same things? Yeah, yeah, very analytical, coming in and evaluating where we are, uh, being honest. Um, you know, in our revenue right now, if you would have put us in the SEC, we'd be third in the conference if you take away the distribution again. Um, but it's looking at our processes and procedures, tweaking them, to, to what I know is is going to work, um, holding people accountable, um, putting a path, not to say, hey, we're going to do this, but there's steps. This is where we're going to be, but step one is here, and then step two is here, and step three is here, putting a timeline to it and holding people accountable for those accomplishments. And it's really just, as I mentioned earlier, it's changing the culture and, and keeping your foot on the pedal and saying, we're going to move forward. We're going to look at better ways to do things um, than, than we have before uh, and making sure we provide the very best. And, and since you've been here at Florida State, I mean, and this is the viewer's eyes seeing it from the outside. You've been able to retain Coach Alameda, the softball coach. You know, a lot of fans were worried that she was about to jump ship to somewhere else. And she ultimately ended up staying at Florida State. And then we ended up losing a, a longtime soccer coach, but without missing a beat, we ended up pulling in a, a, another great from Tennessee. And, and you obviously got some great second pieces that I would say, in my opinion, help complement uh, the football team as well as what Mike Norvell is doing and stuff of that nature. What do you look for in coaches? Is it just their achievements at other schools or is there certain characteristics that you look for? That, that's a great question, Chris. Uh, you know, and I'll go back to Central Michigan and some of my coaching hires and we'll talk about the process. You know, I hired eight coaches in those three years. Five of them were coach of the year, I believe, in their first or second year. Um, and it's I'm very analytical when I tell this story um, of me being at the Bengals and our scout and looking at how the pro model of evaluating talent they use on players and taking that to my evaluation of coaches and not only the ones we have now we're, we have a whole process system uh, that we go away because it's it's very important that we don't make mistakes when it comes to those hires and we go away and evaluate talent watch film office defense um I may send someone, if someone's on my call it list, um, whether whether it's a sport, we have a list for every sport because I never know when a coach is going to come in and say, Mom, I'm on a car, but I'm gone. Um, I got to be prepared. And so we break down film. We have talent. Uh, I'm, we, we go do scouting reports, just like you're going to scout a, a recruit. I want to know everything I know about this person without sitting down and talking to them and whether they're a fit. But then at the end of the day, it comes down, my main responsibility, and I, I say this, is to provide the very best for our student athletes. When providing the very best, I have the responsibility to really sur surround them with people of high character. And that is, that is the number one thing I look for, because 
when you're at least me, and I think it was both you guys too, when you're 17 to 21, 22 years old, that's when you're making philosophical decisions on how you're going to be, what your life's going to look like uh, later, what kind of person you're going to be, what kind of core values. And you get that guidance from the people you're around every day. And it's up to me to make sure that our head coaches, our assistant coaches, our staff in the athletic department that have relationships with these young men and women, that we constantly have people of high character, strong core values that they are either taking from and have those relationships or they're visually watching because they watch of what kind of person, what kind of organization we are uh, that they can learn from. And having three daughters who are division one athletes, you know, when they're picking their school and I'm sitting back and letting them make that decision, but I'm evaluating that they're going to be surrounded by people because they're, they're off and they're gone. And I want to make sure that they got people there that are, have their best interest, their heart because Laura and I are in Tallahassee and we can't be there every day. Um, so it's very important that you have people with strong morals, strong core values um, that care more about the student athlete off the court pitch field, but also winners. Uh, because I think when you're a student athlete, that's part of the game. Now, we can do everything we want to do, but at the end of the game, your experience is based on winning. And I want people to, to pour into them uh, emotionally, have those relationships guide them off the field, out of their sport, but also guide them how to compete in their sport, which is going to lead to how to compete in life. And winning is part of that process. You you had just brought up your three daughters, um, so something else we have coming. I, I for some reason don't have any boys. I can only have three daughters. <laughs> I think the all girls club like me, huh? Wouldn't, yes, have, wouldn't have it any other way. No, being being a girl dad, which you know, as a young man, you think I want a boy, I want a boy. And then I had my first daughter, and it was completely electrifying to my life. It's the most I've ever. Had. As soon as they put her in my arms, I lost it, and it's never changed. So. I thought I wanted a boy until I had three girls that literally act like miniature soldiers that don't do any wrong, especially right. even if they do wrong, no wrong. So my wife does all the disciplining and I'm the fun parent. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. And I think that's, a, I think that's, you know, the person being a girl dad. So we get that. Um, it, when you came into Florida state and you were, I, I'm assuming the president of the boosters, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What made you come to Tallahassee in the first place from where you were previously at? What attracted you about this place? That's a great question. A um, couple of things. I, I'd never been to Tallahassee. I'd never, I grew up a Florida State, diehard Florida State baseball fan. So I grew up in Memphis. My dad was at Memphis State at the time. Um, and so, you know, Coach Martin would bring the Knowles in, the old Metro Conference, play at Tim McCarver Stadium. And I was a baseball football guy, and I'd go watch the Knowles and, I mean, Richie Lewis and that run in, in 80, 84, 86. Um, you know, it was just amazing to watch and grew up. But we didn't have the Internet or cell phones, so you kind of went with who recruited you. Because uh, I came out of high school out of Lafayette, Louisiana, and I was, like I said, I was a football baseball guy and had offers in football to play both um, Mississippi State, some other plays. And chose just to concentrate on baseball and really, really love it and, and love the sport um, and everything that goes along it. But, you know, Tallahassee was such a, I always played Florida State, but never been. And, but all my buddies who played here, coaches that I ran across and become friends with that had come coached here at some part in any sport, um, always talked about when they retire, they're going to move back to Tallahassee. And I was like, really? It, is that great? They, nobody ever said a negative thing about it. So when my wife, who's from Southern California, and I had this opportunity and knowing the boosters and the history of Seminole boosters and Andy Miller had done a tremendous job, icon in the industry, and I tease it, you know, how do you turn that down when they call you? Because that job only comes open every 43 years. Um, but knowing that history and 
just to be a part of it and knowing, believing um, my characteristics, my skill set could come here and have a great opportunity to make a difference. And I felt like it's where I was in Michigan. I'd done everything I could accomplish there and built a new football facility, hired all the great coaches, were winning championships and um, just felt like, you know, this is another opportunity to utilize my skill set to make a difference. And and it's Florida State, who was my favorite school growing up. Um, and so it was just kind of aligned, um, not knowing uh, whether, you know, the athletic director position would open or work out. If I had that opportunity, great. But I was very content um, of running the booster organization as well. Well, another thing that I did not know, uh, both of us are from Memphis. So that's <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. I, I have barbecue shipped to me all the time. Me too. Rendezvous comes in delivered. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you ever eat the barbecue spaghetti? Which I thought was absolutely yes. wild that people yeah. did that. But it was amazing. Um, but, yeah, I was actually raised in Memphis. Um, I went to Delta State. Ah, Cleveland, so, Mississippi. Yes, sir. Um, baseball, I was – Mike Martin – actually recruited me at Florida State and I came down for a visit and accidentally stepped on the football field. Yeah. And Mickey Andrews made me run looking for some place that didn't exist. And I wasn't even there for football, but Mickey Andrews got me to death. So I took off running and the lady's like, there is no Andrews at all. And I was like, oh, I went back and Mickey said it took you long enough. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't mean to step on the field. And he was like, did Bobby give you permission to step on the field? I said, no, sir. He's like, Go find Andrews Hall. I took all so, um, but yes, being from Memphis uh, was was definitely awesome. We we grew up on Bill Street, uh, yeah. Ron Barbecue. Um, it, it was all wonderful. Both bridges always stink to try to cross into Arkansas, yeah. but it was all right. Yeah, um, great, great community. I enjoyed my time there. Yes, sir. Have you been back since uh, Bass Pro took the pyramid over? Yes, I haven't been in it, but I, I have seen it drive across the bridge. It, it is quite amazing. So if you get an opportunity, which I know you're busy, it, it's really nice what they did inside. All right. Um, you know, obviously, all of the all of the people, and I, I'm not going to ask a crazy question here, but all of the people are obviously seeing, you know, the public come out after y'all had y'all's uh, meeting, mm -hmm. and you know, you were you were just talking facts, and that's what I was trying to explain to the fans that watch our show is this isn't Florida State coming out and saying, adios, you know, we're, we're not trying to be that way. But our conference relationship with Florida State and every conference is looked at as a marriage. It's got to be good for both sides. Correct. And all you're doing is merely saying we have to make this better for both sides. Um, and, and the way that you presented that, the way that it was explained, I think it brought more clarity to the fan base, the alum, um, it really jolted a lot of people. Obviously, you have people like myself, James, and others that we all – we dream about the, the Greeners farm pastures on the other side, um, if possible. But what are some of the things that could change that would help Florida State and the ACC Conference, so to speak, if we get to stay here because we obviously want to be here? What are the things that they could change that would help that, in, in your opinion, if you can't answer that? Yeah. You know, we're, we have a great commissioner in Jim Phillips. And, I, and I'm telling you, he is working day and night and, and trying to solve, um, call it the revenue or the media contracts or identifying new revenue streams. And that's something I've been very impressed. Um, he's put me on a few committees. Knowing my background, I've been able to look at things, call it differently and identifying revenue streams or improving current revenue streams, either one. And he and I have a wonderful relationship, been talking, known him 20 years and think he's the absolute very best in the business. Um, and he's working and we've got to solve the gap uh, to our, really our media agreement. And um, when you, when you present the facts and you look at what, agreements are out there currently and you look at ours we are going to be annually 30 million roughly behind 
uh, our two peer conferences. And I'm just stating that that's just not good enough uh, because you compound that over years and start adding it up $30 million a year and then it's 60. And at the end of the term, by the time our term comes up, it's going to be like 400 million behind uh, in that timeline. That's a lot of money that you can go make a difference and, and use some separation, whether it's facilities, where you're paying your coaches, whether it's acquiring the best talent, whatever it is. Um, and so it's my responsibility to make sure that Florida State's brand Florida State competes at the elite level because that is our standard. And we're talking about the daughters, my biggest concern. And I talk about this openly to the board. I talk, my big concern is I can't provide that experience to other sports that I can call it the revenue sports. Um, and we pride ourselves in that here, that we compete for national championships across everything. Uh, but my concern is I've got to continue to provide because we're educators and these other sports learn it, just as well as football does uh, of how to compete in life by competing on the softball field, the soccer pitch. Well, you name it, the baseball stadium. I mean, those kids deserve the very best as well. So how do we continue to financially make that commitment to them to compete at the highest level? and to be Florida State University. And to, in order to do that, we have to be able to keep up with our peers across the country. So I'm just stating the facts of this is coming. There's a freight train coming down the road. We need to acknowledge it. I'm also stating the facts that we drive the media of the league. When, when you look at uh, the viewership, you look at the households, you look at everything, how ESPN, Fox, you name the media outlet measures the brands we drive the media of the league. We, we had the most viewership between 2014. I want to take it 14 after the national. didn't want to count the national championship year. Let's, let's look at 14 to 22 and call it our downtime. I think we'll all raise our hands that we were down during that tenure. We're still number one in the conference uh, by far, driving the average viewership across football, basketball. So... We if we drive the media, we are the face of the conference, then I think we need to make sure that the top brands, Clemson is right, I mean, Clemson is right behind us. The top brands in this conference needs to stay the top brands in the conference and drive the media. And it's up to us and it's up to us working with the conference to say, how do we continue to invest in, in those programs to make sure that they're competing with their peers across the country? Um, Shiv, did you talk about the, um, the disparity? Um, for obviously, four hundred million. If they continue to go down that path, what are and outside of that, even looking at us remaining in the ACC and things of that nature, what are some things that we're doing to to play catch up when it comes to terms of making sure we have com comparable coaching salaries, coaching staffs, and where does our football coaching staff kind of rank to where I wouldn't even say amongst the conference, but in terms of what Florida and what Miami were doing. They made a lot of news last offseason about off-field staff, what they're paying their coaches. I'm curious about our football and maybe even some other sports, um, if you have time to answer that. One hundred percent. And it's something we pride ourselves in. I go back supply, uh, surrounding our student athletes with the very best. And when I first got it, we were behind and especially where college football is gone and using my Mike and I getting to coach Norvell and I getting together immediately. And we invested over $3 million right at $3 million into his staff of uh, personnel uh, because we needed the analytics. We needed the scouting because the game has changed. Um, it is operated now like an NFL team. Well, we're, well, I joke and I say, okay, you're, you're high school signees. That's your draft picks. Uh, that you're that you're going after and then you got a whole other department uh, that's looking at the portal which is your nfl free agency and not only are you judging talent but you're judge you're watching film on freshmen not knowing if they're ever going to go into the portal but you're breaking down like the nfl does every person out there in case they go in the border you got a head start that takes people 
<laughs> to be able to to have that instant haste. Johnny's in the portal, and we instantly got a scouting report, film, everything broken down on this, not knowing if he's ever going to go in the portal. That's like running it like an NFL franchise, um, and that's important. So investing in staff, investing um, in our personnel was important. Uh, when we look across the league, making sure we're competitive salaries. Uh, we weren't for our standards, uh, so we – we made a commitment there in the right people, not just to give a raise, but make sure we have the right people and an alignment to go out and make a difference. And I think you're seeing that investment coming forth in our football program. Um, you look at like Coach Alameda, uh, you know, an investment there. She's the second highest paid coach in the country, highest paid staff, biggest operational budget. Uh, we are invested in women's softball. Um, Link, bringing him on board. We're going to win a national championship there. I am, I'm going to run around here. We're going to win a national championship in baseball at, at Florida State because it's the most historic Florida, it's the most historic baseball program in college baseball. No one has our history. Quick thing about Link he's a, um, he's a former Florida High Demon as well. He's an eight year Seminole, just like I was. That's right. He, 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 y'all both were right over there by the, where the medical school is now. Uh, so, you know, uh, bringing him back, but that commitment to him going, hey, what do you need? And Coach Penske, soccer. I mean, I, I just go to him and tell, ask them what they need. I, I'm not going to tell you I can do it right now, but we're going to find a solution to get you the resources that you need to compete at an elite level. And that's the standard that we we walk in in and expect uh, here. And when we go out and recruit, so it's making those investments, but it's making the right investments at the right time, and having a long term plan of what needs to be, um, say, what investment needs to occur over the next five, six, seven years. I've got our financial situation already spelled out to twenty forty two. I promise you, there's no athletic department that knows in the country that has brought in experts to, to help with their financials going all the way out to 2042. So you can make decisions along the way of what the impact needs to happen. Um, so the, that's the philosophy we have. Invest wisely, but invest where it's going to make a difference, not only in our performance, but in, in the student athlete experience as well. Well, that was some really good stuff. Um, not based for any conference reason, but is Florida State or has Florida State ever been uh, seeking the AAU membership? That's something President McCullough is really working towards. Uh, you know, that is his expertise. And he talks about it frequently in our board meetings. Um, and, you know, we are, we are trending that way. We're one of the fastest rising academic institutions in the country. We use that recruiting. What other institution can you come here and have this student athlete experience, compete for championships, and also attend a top 20 public institution in the country? I had a recruit sitting on my uh, couch in my office, and I'm talking to him. And the father's like, "There's we have gone to, I'm not going to name the schools, but you would know them all, uh, who we compete against. They go, no one has talked more academics and the success of academics than Florida State on any of our visits. And he goes, we really admire that. And I, and my, and I tell him, there's, we want our expectations are to, uh, when you walk across that stage or leave Tallahassee or go back to your community, that you've got a meaningful diploma with a meaningful degree of a top 20 public institution in America, that means something. In your left hand, a couple of championship rings on your right hand. Uh, you're prepared for life. <laughs> you are now going to go make a difference in your community. And that is something we expect, and that's our standard. And we, we are constantly talking to our, our student athletes about that. But President McCullough is doing an unbelievable job um, of continuing that upward trajectory that Florida State has when it comes to getting AAU status. 
Um, you speak a lot about the overall, not just the athletic ability of the student athlete, but I've, not the athlete part. You talk about the student and the holistic part of it. Um, one of the things that I know has been difficult for guys who have transitioned out um, over the years is finding a place and understanding how to continue to lever leverage the brand, not only in the community, but also how to reach back. Um, I know people who naturally do it as myself, mm -hmm. um, teammate Brian McFadden, my, my little sister who's an attorney who was a student athlete at Florida State as well. How do we do a better job of having that multi-generational experience for the student athlete while um so again educating them about life after college but mm -hmm. also kind of showing them that this is what's going to be you through um through the alumni or is that something that's even possible um in, in the current climate the, the, uh, two ways uh, one we got to do a better job and we are doing a better job we just partner with athlete network um so we can be able to reach out to our student athletes that have graduated people such as your, your both yourselves that we can reach out part of that is even a job board that's only for student athletes former student athletes that can go on and see what jobs are available we're partnering with this company and to provide that opportunity for our student athletes that's something that's very important to me uh, that we fill that network um, that there's not a void uh, that we're communicating welcoming back please come back uh with open arms you know it, it pains me when i talk to former athletes that say you know i just did i never felt welcome back you know there's a coaching change or something along those lines well that's on the administration uh that's and that's why i preach to our staff universal presence universal access i'm in the training room two or three times a day talking to our student athletes uh, I probably, they know me, they know my core values. I'm not just that dude in the suit walking around that never talks to them. Um, I'm going to have authentic relationships with them. They're going to know Laura, my wife, they're going to know my dogs. Um, and I think a lot of it starts with our staff and our coaches. So that the programs change. I mean, don't think they don't over time coaches, your coach ain't always going to be there. Uh, but I think the culture uh, that we create should be consistent, should be there, uh, that we have those authentic relationships with all 650 of our student athletes. And then that we're also reaching out to our alumni asking, how do we help you? How can we continue to help, continue to support you? I'm not going to name the uh, institution, but we have a concept that I'm working on here that I start. We started at another institution where we had people on staff and their only job was to help former athletes, former student athletes find jobs, find careers and to assist them resume building, whatever it was, they went out and used the network because the Seminoles are a very proud network and we help each other to make sure that, hey, so and so Susie um, is a great marketer, lives in Boston, wants to move back to Florida you're a CEO, you're a baseball player. She was a cross country, you're a CEO. Here's her resume, uh, you know, Seminoles helping Seminoles. And that's a, something that we want to work on that we can help and want to, something I want to drive and initiate. Well, Mr. Alford, we're not going to co continue to hold you. I know you're very busy. Um, I do have uh, one last thing. Um, to kind of comment on and see what you feel about this this situation. So I was talking to Robert Scott last night over the telephone. Me and him have a yes, sir. And I talked to Michaela Edmonds daily. Um, she she was a big part of what me and James were doing. Um, phenomenal athlete, phenomenal young lady. Um, but both of them, every time about a woman with a purpose. Yes, who has a purposeful life already at such a young age who wants to go out and make a difference um i just admire everything she does yes sir um they speak both of those uh, that i just spoke on they speak very highly of how you make them feel on campus every time they see you it's never you never turn them blind out like you're too busy you never make them feel like they're out of spot or unseen and rob said chris i'm nothing but offensive lineman nobody notices us 
And <laughs> he said, every time Michael sees me, man, he, it's, I feel like dad's like, what's up? <laughs> I was like, I, I agree. Um, I've seen, I've seen you interact on campus of being around. Um, I just wonder what gives you that you and Mike both, cause we all talk about Norvell, um, high energy. Mm-hmm. You seem to be highly energetic as well though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going back to, uh, as I talked about earlier, just having those authentic relationships. I think it's very important. They know me, they know my core values. And I think it's a very important. I know them. Um, I can't do my job if I don't know them and what they're about. Um, how do I guide them? Uh, how do I put them in p- places, positions to be successful? And it's just having that authentic, natural relationship. I'm going to go out and say hello. Uh, I'm, I attend several practices a day. I think it's important our student athletes see me, um, be visible. Is why I go to the training room, the weight room. I walk the halls, I go to practice, I'm going to say hello. What can I do? My job is to make ensure that they're having the greatest experience of their lives at this juncture, that we're making a difference, that we're providing guidance, um, that we're here to answer questions, um, that, I, that I'm here to assist them with any issue or problem they have. And I can't do that sitting in, a, in an office and, and not having those authentic relationships with our student athletes and we're here to support them and uh, anything they want to do. And a big game talked about, but you have those relationships and that's when you see this culture carry on. Uh, When Michaela goes and has this successful career, she's going to remember the relationship she had with her head coach. She's going to remember the relationship she had with her sport admin her athletic director, her president who who's very involved. They're going to remember that and come back and, and and want to come back to Florida State because it's such a special time during their lives. And we can't do that sitting in our office. Um, so I, I lean on our staff. I call it universal access, universal presence. Uh, our student athletes who are here for them, they need to understand um, that we're here to help, uh, that, that we're going to do everything we can uh, to make sure they have the best time. Sometimes, you know, you can't do everything. But to provide that very best experience and to be here for them is very important. But that's also my personality. Um, you know, I I wake up every morning. They give me more energy knowing I'm coming in to try to make a difference. And that's one reason I got back in college sports when I was with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I, the Jones family said it a hundred times. Were unbelievable, but unbelievable to me and my family. Um, we had security. We could have stayed with the Cowboys and lived a very good life in Dallas uh, for a long time. But when I woke up in the morning, I wasn't making a difference in Tony Romo's life or Jason Witten's life, in my opinion. Um, I was doing a job. I was doing a job well, but how that's why I got back into college sports uh, is for how do we make a difference in these young men's and women's lives in various ways. But how do we make a difference? And if you can, as big game, you know, if you can connect one with one that has a difference um, and make a difference in their lives, then you, you're you doing your job. You guys do a phenomenal job. And just to, you know, just even go with what Chris said, that those former athletes said, I mean, those current athletes said, as a former athlete, it always makes me feel good. I'm just like, you know, I, I kind of try to play the back on the sideline. I don't want to get in trouble when I'm watching the game, when I'm watching the game. <laughs> But, I mean, the times when you've actually gone out of your way um, to say how that actually definitely um, makes somebody feel good. And I tell people, my son probably gets away with more stuff at Florida State than I do um, or at practice. Um, and that's because Coach Norvell and um, his favorite coach, um, uh, man, Coach Fuller. Um, coach Fuller, like to have those guys actually acknowledge, not me, I don't really care if they acknowledge me, but they do, yeah. to acknowledge your kid. Uh, I told him that's, a, that's an effective way to recruit. So I, it doesn't matter how mad I am about how many points we gave up or how many points we didn't score. If you treat my kid good, I'm gonna probably be a little bit nicer to you. But but it's um but it's very contagious and um it, and attitude reflects leadership. And obviously, um your leadership is um definitely been contagious and has filtered through all of the different um coaches to the athletes. So kudos to that. 
Uh, kudos to Miss Laura, my wife, bringing, uh, I can't tell you how many cookies she makes a week. <laughs> That's what I need. Tuesday, I'm coming in town. I need some cookies. I heard about oh. these cookies, man. I want some cookies. Uh, you know, she brings them, supplies them to the, all the student athletes, and uh, they love them. And, you know, I have a big jar of them right here, and I keep them fresh because I want student athletes to come to my office. My, my admin, who I got the very best, Sarah, um, understands that if a student athlete needs me, I don't care if I'm in here negotiating this $20 million deal, pull me out. Because if they need me or something they need, I need to be here for them. And um, it's an open door uh, policy that, that, that I want to know what's going on, good and bad. And, and that's the only way you improve. And we're constantly looking at ways how we improve our culture, how we improve our relationships, and how we make a difference. Well, everyone that's going to be seeing this, if you if you really go and look at what um, Athletic Director Michael Offers has done at Florida State, in my opinion, in a very short period of time, the coaches that he's retained, the coaches that he's hired, uh, the negotiations as far as what Florida State can do as far as media goes, those are all prime examples, but raising over a hundred plus million dollars to build a then one facility those things don't come easy. There has to be a lot of work that gets put into that. And I think people know that on an obvious basis. On a day-to-day -day basis, I don't know the different categories or how many different categories athletic director often through nonstop. You think about it, it's one of the most complex jobs uh, in the country um, because of the different units, um, whether it's coaches, you know, that's a put them in a bucket and contract was contract negotiations, the external side of fundraising and revenue, um, the internal HR, um, student athlete health issues, mental health issues that come across your desk on a daily basis, um, looking at your business operations and, and you're having a great CFO. And I, I couldn't do all this without having a great support staff. Uh, of bringing up my two deputies, Cindy Hartman and my deputy, she handles internal operations and Janine Lalek, who I brought in is my other deputy for external. I have a senior women's administrator, Lisa Veritamitas, who I brought in uh, to help me uh, with our student athletes and compliance and everything. I mean, it's just Jim Curry, just an unbelievable staff who has taken the philosophy, embraced it. And it's different than what was here before. And, but embracing the change and going out and being effective, you know, and I tip my hat that one of the reasons we're able to do some of these things is because David Coburn came in and stopped the bleeding and really did an unbelievable, people don't give him enough credit for the job he did uh, when he was athletic director, which allowed me to follow in his footsteps and be able to take it to another level because he got it on stable ground uh, when it was when it was bleeding. And uh, I can't tell you the things being behind the scenes, but being able to see the financials and everything that he was able to to accomplish while he was here, maybe not as much externally, but allowed us to be able to go out and make a difference and hit the ground running. Well, James, if you don't have anything else, um, Mr. Alford, I really appreciate all of your time, and I apologize if I held you up from anything else. Yeah, going, just going with women's basketball, as I mentioned, the, the cheer them on, and uh, it's been a special year, as I, as I mentioned. Brooke's done an unbelievable job, and going through that process of, of hiring her, and I'll tell this story, and I hope she didn't mind me telling it. You know, when I was going through that process, I, I told her, I was like, Brooke, because she had a great plan. And she, I mean, you look at the offense she's running, who she's hired, what kind of student athlete she was going to recruit, all that. I mean, she came in that process prepared um, to win that interview. But, but I told her, I said, look, you're, you know, you've got a different burden that I can't appreciate, that a lot of people can't appreciate. When you're a head coach and your jersey's also hanging in the rafters, uh, that's that's different. Uh, that, that is a different standard a different burden, a different expectation that's going to be placed on you. Uh, right or wrong, it's going to be placed on you. And she has embraced that 
better than any coach that I've ever seen in that situation. And the culture she's building, if you haven't been around our women's basketball team, the, the culture she's building is something to be proud of. And uh, I just tip my hat to the job that she's done in her first year. Well, that's that's amazing to hear. We're, as fans personally, I believe we're extremely impressed with what she has been able to accomplish with the student athletes that she's got and the team that she's put together as far as the staff goes. And, and also with the amount of time that, to me, it seems like everything at Florida State's on where it should take us three to five years to accomplish what we're doing in a, a one to two year span. Because, you know, a lot of people, fan-wise, we saw the down years on the football program from, needless to say, 15 to 21-ish. And I was explaining, I was like, well, look how fast that turned around. It was one year later. And everybody's like, well, we went through this for five years. I said, yeah, but look how many different pieces changed. New athletic director, new president, new coaches. So much change. I mean, I mean, what Blackman – Previous quarterback, I, mean, I think he had four coordinators in four years. I mean, and if people, as you two know, the game, I mean, that's like learning four different languages every year and trying to figure it out. So uh, that's it, it was difficult, but we, we needed stability. And we hadn't had stability, and that's why the assistant coaches are so important. Um, that's why the head coach stability across the board is so important. Uh, but then again, not sacrificing character just for stability, making sure we're, we're, we have the right people on staff that's going to have a true impact on these young men and women. Brian Pinsky's doing an unbelievable job in soccer. I mean, the culture he's developed, him and Abby, his wife, and they get out in the community, they, they're present, they're coming to other events, they support all of our sports. And that's something I'm proud of, the culture we're having where I see student athletes across all of our sports attending other sports uh I, to see jordan travis at a soccer match at a baseball <laughs> at game at softball i mean that makes a difference and to see those student athletes but more importantly also to see our coaches and assistant coaches attending all these other sports uh, you see the camaraderie you see the family culture that we're, we're still preaching but also really bringing people in that embrace what we're trying to get accomplished and who we are uh, as an organization. I was going to ask you to have some closing comments, but I don't know if it gets better than what you just did. So <laughs> I was really going to ask, I was like, we got any closing comments, but then you did that. Um, so the, I guess what we'll end it on is what was it like having Jermaine and some of the other guys come back this past weekend uh, as far as that whole situation that am I beyond great? Yeah, uh, big game knows, you know, Coach Norvell does an unbelievable job of developing not only current student athletes, but really reaching out and asking uh, former players to come back. And I touched on it earlier, you know, a lot of times that disconnect comes when when the coach you played for, because not only the head coach, but your assistant coaches aren't there anymore. And that's where it's up to the organization and the department to make sure we're – maintaining uh, those relationships as well. So you're not tied into just uh, a coaching situation, but he does a marvelous job of, of installing a culture, reaching out to former students, athletes, and welcoming them back. And we welcome them back across the board in every sport and, and want to be there. But um, it was great to have Jermaine back. And, and I said this at his brick ceremony that I've been fortunate that I've worked at some very prestigious institutions that are successful in athletics, worked in the NFL, seen athletes, student athletes come in one year, leave, get in, but I've never seen someone come in in 12 months and make the culturally impact that Jermaine did and not just in football. Uh, the impact he made on the department, uh, I would go as far as, say, the university of getting his degree from Florida State. But setting in, in Seminole football and Florida State football, there's already a standard. But him coming in and establishing the workout standard, uh, or let's say, let's put it this way, 
reestablishing what it, the workout standard and what it meant to be a Seminole. I, it, I've never seen someone have an impact in that short a time like he did uh, on the club. And you still feel the effects of it and, and what they're doing. So I tip my hat to him. It's great, very deserving. He, he had a baby girl the night before <laughs> at that ceremony. So uh, just proud of the man he is. And I can tell you, he is a seminal true and true through his heart. This place will always be home for him. Just love how y'all keep reiterating the standard. Like I just, I just love that because that's that's that that's what it is. That's the that's the, the thing that um keeps everybody that that could unites every one of those. And kudos to Jeff Cup. Jeff Cup has done a phenomenal yeah. job of trying to get former guys to come back through the email. Anytime somebody asks me, I send them the. I say, hey, email this guy. He'll take care of everything. And and Mike, I don't know about the open office. I haven't got gotten there early enough to get to his office, but I definitely know if you go tell Miss Carol you come to practice, she's gonna have a nice little lanyard for you. <laughs> That's right. And um, and even if you go there, she'll write it in Sharpie for you. But if you let her know beforehand, they'll print you out something all fancy like so. But um, but appreciate you guys and. And um, again, for, for all that you guys have done in bringing back um, Florida State to where, where it used to be at. And and hopefully, not hopefully, we know it will go far, far beyond what it's been. Well, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the support you give us. I appreciate, um, you know, coming back, uh, big game, being around. Uh, and Chris, everything that you, you do for our programs and to help us get our message out of who we are, uh, because it makes a difference uh, of going out, whether it's recruiting or telling our story. I tell our staff all the time, we need to be the ones to tell our story of what we're doing. And and you allow us that platform and opportunity to go out and let the public know and our constituents, our fans, recruit, you name it, understand what we're about. And you, and we appreciate it and appreciate all the support. We appreciate everything that you're doing, Mr. Alford, and, and the entire staff at Florida State, regardless of coaching and administration. Um, I, I am going to give a huge shout out to James Warren. Um, he's a uh, a great. How do I say this? Because <laughs> he, he he he's you talk about Seminole through and through now. Yes, yes, he's been there forever. Yeah, and he came to. He came to me earlier this year and he was like, Chris, we're trying to we're trying to get new new boosters. Mm -hmm. He's like, what can me and you do together to make this work? And I was like, I can get everybody that I've got that watches this show and let them understand that you don't have to be given thousands of dollars a month or something to make a difference. And I know at one point we got to 180 new members from just that. I don't know what it said now. Me and him are supposed to talk later today. So I'm just I'm proud to be able to help in any way possible. I can't wait to see where Florida State ends up in the near future. Well, our goal is to get to, and Stephen Ponder over there is doing a great job, and Jamie and everyone's doing a terrific job. Our goal is to get to twenty thousand uh, dollars. We got twenty athletic teams. I want twenty thousand dollars, and uh, we're on that pace. Um, and that still wouldn't put us tops in the ACC. Uh, but we're working towards that, uh, and you're right. Any Being a self-sustaining athletic department, I mean, we don't get any state funds. Uh, we're building something. We have to raise it. If I'm, if I'm giving a, a financial lift to our nutrition because I think it's important, I have to go find that money. Uh, I'm not getting any assistance from the state or from the university. Um, so every little bit helps and uh, it allows us to really have an impact on these student athletes and what we're able to to provide them to grow them and so never think that you're five dollars to five million dollars it, it, it's gonna it's gonna add up and it's gonna allow us to really pour back into these student athletes to change some lives mr offer that a wonderful time in Iowa. I hope you have a safe trip and I uh, hope you have a, I always say this to everybody that's on here. It's kind of a cliche, but I hope you have a no plastic rest of your day. Yeah, I appreciate I like that. I'm going to steal that a lot. Uh, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on anytime. Uh, just let me know and I appreciate what you guys do. And go Knowles. Go Knowles.
Well, everyone, that was the interview with uh, Athletic Director Michael Alford. Hope you enjoyed the content. It was absolutely amazing. Um, you obviously see the amazing things that Florida State is doing and what amazing things that Michael Alford is doing at Florida State. I hope that this gave you some answers on what Florida State's doing in the near future, what they're doing currently, and what in the past tense that matters the most. I hope that it shows that Florida State is very big on bringing back the trajectory of what Florida State has accomplished with all of the greats before, and also to continue to create those legends, to continue to create just, you know, the, the top tier human being that comes out of anywhere. Um, I hope you had a, a great experience with this. And y'all have a good rest of your evening. And as always, go Knowles.